Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You set the earth on its foundations so that it shall never be shaken. You cover it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation and they sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. The trees of the Lord are watered abundantly. The cedars of Lebanon that God planted, in, in them the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the fir trees. You have made the moon to mark the seasons. The sun knows it's time for setting. You make darkness and it is night when all the animals of the forest come creeping out. When the sun rises, they withdraw and lie down in their dens. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom, you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation be pleasing to God for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, praise the Lord. God is still speaking. Friends, you are going to love Psalm 104. It's a celebration of creation and celebration of God's sustaining care for every part of it. Three great things about 104. One, it harkens back to the two creation stories in Genesis. Two, we get a common table grace from Psalm 104 and we hear about a sea monster. True fact, this is called It's a New Day. Your part goes like this. Breathe into the earth, Holy One, and renew us. It's a new day. Breathe into the earth, Holy One, and renew us. It's a new day. Ready? Breathe into the earth, Holy One, and renew us. It's a new day.
sing for you for all our lives. Sing as long as we have breath. Breathe into the earth, holy one, and renew us. It's a new day. It's a new day. Breathe into the earth, holy one, and renew Thank you for inviting me to participate in this gathering as you come together to advocate for climate justice under the theme, Imagine, God's Earth and People Restored, Imagine. Imagine a world where children do not go to bed hungry at night. Imagine a world where we learn to lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside and study war no more. Imagine where our air is clear, our water clean, our environment healing. Imagine a world where there is liberty and justice for all. Imagine a world where every person is seen as God sees us, as a child of God, equally endowed imago dei in the image and likeness of God, and therefore equally treated under law and in all human relationships. Imagine a new heaven, a new earth, God's earth and people restored. Imagine. It may not seem like it, but your work of climate justice to advocate for that is part of God's grander vision and God's grander intent and mission to bring an end to what is often a humanly created nightmare and to realize God's dream for the human family and the entire family of creation. The Bible says it this way, John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only son God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Some years ago, a friend of mine reminded me that the Greek word used in that passage for world is the word cosmos. It's a big word. It's a word that means this planet Earth, our island home, as a prayer in the Episcopal tradition says. But it's a word that means more than simply this earth. It is this earth and all things that inhabit it. Human, animal, all things, plant. But it includes not just this earth, but the entirety of God's grand and glorious creation through the vast expanse of interstellar space. God so loved the world, everything that is, that God sent his only son into the world. Some years ago, I remember reading a book by uh, Professor Roberta Bondi, who at that time was uh, teaching at Emory Seminary. And it was on patristic theology and the writing of the early church ancestors in the first few centuries. She titled her book as a way of capturing one of their insights that the profound commitment and work of following in the footsteps of Jesus for ancient early church folk 
was to learn to love as God loves. And she titled her book, To Love as God Loves. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. There's a passage later in John's gospel at the last supper after Jesus has washed the feet of his disciples that he gives um, um, the, the great commandment, the commandment to love. And if you look at what he actually says, it's interesting. Jesus said at the last supper, I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. For by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. A new commandment. I remember a few years ago reading a commentary by Professor Amy Jill Levine at Vanderbilt Seminary in which she asked the question, what's new? The command to, to love your neighbor as yourself is found, is written in the Hebrew scriptures. It is there in, in the writings of Moses in Leviticus. You should love your neighbor as yourself. It is there. That was not new. And she went on to say that what was new Love one another as I have loved you. To love as Jesus loves. To love as God loves. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. The work of climate justice. The work of helping to save God's creation the work of helping to save God's world is not a secular endeavor. It is the sacred work of God. For God so loved the world. And we who follow in the footsteps of Jesus are summoned to love as God loves. The work for climate justice is helping us to love the world as God loves the world. But the truth is, this is God's world. You know that, that wonderful old spiritual, he's got the whole world in his hands. I used to think that that means he controls what goes on in the world. No, I don't think it means that. There's an element of freedom that is part of creation. I've come to realize that that's to say he's got the whole world in his hands. It's to say that this world is connected. It's a part of a greater whole, a greater whole that is upheld and in the hands of a loving God. He's got the whole world in his hands. And it's there in the spirit when they say, he's got the little bitty baby in his hands. He's got the, the, the old person in his hands. He's got the birds in his hands. He, he's got the plants in his hands. Got the water in his hands. Got, got the continents in his plants. Got every human creature. He's got you and me, brother. You and me, sister. He's got the whole world in his hands. Dr. King said it this way, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality. We are tied in a single garment of destiny. He's got the whole world in his hands. What affects one directly? affects all indirectly. When you hurt, I'm affected. When I hurt, you're affected. We're tied together. Some years ago, I attended the gathering of um, Anglican bishops uh, from around the world 
um, where the Archbishop of Canterbury brings together all of the Anglican and Episcopal bishops um, for a conference in, in England at Canterbury Cathedral. And there are about 800, roughly 800 bishops or so gathered for this. It happens roughly every 10 years. And each day there was, was a theme for the conference, um, the bishop and evangelism, the bishop and social justice, the bishop and um, worship, um, and on and on and on. And there was one particular day that was set aside the bishop and the environment. And we were broken into smaller groups at one point of about 40, groups of about 40, um, and invited to share. We'd been in even smaller groups and then we're invited to share when we got into the groups of 40. And the question that we were presented with was what has been the effect of climate change on your community, your country, your context? This was 2008, and most of the bishops from the Northern Hemisphere, from the so-called Western world, especially American, were relatively silent. And we sat and we listened. I remember the Bishop of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. I remember him saying that he remembered as a little boy the snow-capped peak of Mount Kilimanjaro. He said, it's not as snow-capped anymore. I remember the Archbishop from Central Africa saying that the growing seasons have changed and growth is not what it once was and famine in different parts of the land are the result. But I remember most profoundly the bishop from the Solomon Island. He stood up and he spoke. And he said, the waters are rising. And he said, soon our homes, our island homes will be no more. And then he turned and he looked at those of us who are Americans. And he said, America, we need your help to stop the risings of the ocean. We need you to be our friends. We have been your friends. It was my people in the Solomon Islands who saved your president, John Kennedy, when he could have drowned in the Pacific Ocean during the war. We saved him and his sailors because we were your friends. Now we need you to be our friends. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. What affects one directly affects all indirectly. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus. And we who follow Jesus are called to love as God loves. And he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 God love you. God bless you. And may God hold us all 
in those almighty hands of love.